Hi, I'm Andrew Berry, and welcome to At The Benches YouTube channel. In a few days time, it's coming up to my wedding anniversary, um, and I've been happily married for a long time. <laughs> and uh, back years and years and years ago, when I met my wife first, getting very sentimental at the moment now, when I met my wife first, for the first um, Valentine's Day present that she gave me, she gave me this little silver ingot. It wasn't on the chain that I'm wearing at the moment, it was on the quite a nice fine box chain. And this little ingot, silver ingot, back in the early mid 80s was nice and fashionable and they're even still fashionable now it's something very very simple and over the years you you wear something and you don't realize how much things are wearing the top links the loops the bales the jump rings the bolt rings the clasp you don't realize how much everything wears and i say i've had this since 1980 1985, so 85, what's that? That's 32 years now. And I think I've only ever replaced the top loop on this here, I think only twice. And I looked at this the other day because we were trying out some little jewelry wipes. And this little top loop here now is getting quite thin. And I thought this is going to be a very straightforward project for our YouTube channel to show you how to replace this top link here and even the other link and that's got a bit of wear on that as well and even though we've got quite a thick chain with it this still wears in a particular place or two on this top loop so let's play with this let's replace the top loop and i'll show you what we're going to do to replace these top loops here and also just this large jump ring that we've got on the top here now. So the first thing we need to do is to simply either, two options, you either cut off the top jump ring or you can heat up the ingot to remove it. I'm simply going to cut it off with the saw and then just gently file it. Um, to me, that's gonna be a nice, simple, easy operation rather than having to heat it up there's a risk, there's always a risk of things going wrong and melting and unsoldering it, put it into the acid, dry it. You quicker need it just to saw the thing off. I'm going to, uh, so I say, replace this top loop as well here because this is quite worn as well. So I can discard those top pieces there. It's filthy dirty. I never take the thing off. So go in nice and close to the top of the pendant, cut through and cut through. I'll just keep that top jumping there just so I've got some idea of size of when I come to replace it. You can see now where we've cut the loop off here, I'm going to just get a file and just clean up that a fraction to make sure that that surface is nice and flat and clean. Come over then with a buff stick, so that top area now is nice and clean. Just get a little bit of flux onto that first of all, okay, so that's going to protect our area. It's lovely, lovely and clean, you can see how the flux has covered that surface. Just pop that to one side a moment and now we can make up the loop that goes upon the top. I've got uh, a little bit of silver wire here, you've got some various gauges that we have. I'm just going to grab a piece here. Uh, Size-wise, this is roughly about a millimeter, I think. Can we have a look? Okay, the battery's gone in that gauge. Let's try this one. Here we go. That comes, comes in at exactly one millimeter. Just gonna make up my own jump ring. Pair of pliers, take this around. Go past like that. 
and I can just simply saw through that. Okay, so that's my top jump ring. Pop my wire to one side. Now, we need to straighten that up so it's all in alignment. And we could easily and simply come along and just solder that directly upon to the ingot. But it's not going to be very strong. We need to increase the amount of surface area. So I'm popping it in a pair of parallel pliers and I'm going to flatten right where that joint is. And I'm going to go through round about a third to three quarters of the way through this jump ring. And by doing that, you're increasing the surface area. And by doing that, you're increasing the strength of that jump ring. Make sure that is nice and straight. Okay, let's get my tweezers to show you. So I've gone through, run about three quarters of the way. And it's got a nice flat on it. Pop a little bit of borax on that area just to protect the area. Okay, let's solder this onto the pendant next. We're going to put the ingot in a third hand. Now, I'm gonna be soldering it onto here and what I'm going to do, you've got to think about how solder moves and the way it moves regarding heat. I am going to be heating it from this side, which is the plain side here. So I'm going to have this facing me and I'm going to be soldering in this direction, okay? Why? Why am I doing that? It's simple because solder is always attracted to heat. And when I'm soldering, the heat is going to be more so on the back of it than the front. And there's going to be less chance of the solder flowing on this side where there's no flame than it is on the back. I can control where that solder goes. And if I heat up this area, the solder will stay over this side as opposed to that side. If I was putting the heat onto here with the jumping on top, and I had too much solder, there's a chance the solder is going to flow down and fill in all the detail on the top by here. And that is not what I want. So by bringing the flame onto this side, first of all, get the solder to run, then I can bring the flame onto this side just to pull a little bit of solder through onto this side. Hope that all makes a lot of sense. And also I'm going to do a bit of sweat soldering, which means that I'm going to melt a little bit of solder onto the area that is biggest, first of all, then I can bring the little jump ring into place. You really have to think in advance about how the solder is going to move because the solder will love the heat. This way, the heat is concentrated on the back. There's no way that this front edge here is going to get the heat more so than the back because the flame is pointing towards the back of the ingot. So I'm not going to get the solder flowing where it shouldn't be flowing. Let's pop that little bit of solder right in the center. Now I have my little jump ring waiting on the side by here. And like I did in the last film with that plug eye earring, we're going to heat up this area because this area is going to take more heat first of all than the little jump ring. If I brought that into place and tried to heat up them all up at the same time, this little jump ring is going to melt because it's going to get hotter quicker than the rest of the ingot. This is going to take a long time to heat up compared to the jump ring. So we're going to heat up the ingot first. As soon as the solder then starts to melt on the top, we're going to bring our jump ring on top and the heat then will be just right and the solder will transfer from the ingot because that's going to be the right temperature straight across onto the jump ring perfectly. Also what you're going to find is because we've got 
the ingot in these tweezers, the tweezers are gonna take some heat away as well. So let's warm those up first too. We can always lay this down on our soldering block, but I feel that having this straight up like this, we can get the exact placement, whether we want the jump ring forwards or backwards or in the middle, exactly where we want it. So this will take quite a few seconds now to warm these tweezers up, otherwise they're gonna act as a little bit of a, a heat sink. Make sure the hole is rightly positioned on our torch so we get the hottest flame. So let's, you can just see the color of the ingot starting to change. The color of the flux on the top is starting to change first. Whilst that is happening, I have been getting my little jump ring together in the same parallel with the edge, ready and waiting. Look at the color of the flux. Any moment now, that solder is now going to melt. Then I bring the jump ring into place. There we go, bring the jump ring in just like that. If I wanna make sure that solder has been pulled through now to the front, turn that around. It has come through lovely. I'm just gonna warm it up just to ensure that it has come through. Hold on to the jumping in case it falls down. You can see that the solder has come through. Make sure it has. There we go, super brilliant. Okay, that's that. Wait for that to cool a fraction before we pick it up and put it into the acid. I'm gonna leave it in there whilst we make up the next jump ring. Okay, let's work on the next jump ring. Let's just see what size that jump ring is. Uh, 1.5, 1.6 millimeter. Um, I've got my, my bundle of silver wire here. Um, let's see what size this jump ring is, or this wire is here. Uh, 1.2, let me get some thicker wire. That seems to be quite thin. Okay, some thicker wire here now. This is, uh, there we go, 1.6 millimeters, a bundle of wire. It doesn't have to be that accurate. All I'm gonna do is just turn that around to start off with around the pair of pliers. And I'm going to just make sure I take it around the pliers just quite gently. I'm not really doing this very, very tight. It's gonna be nice and even. Just gonna take it around about twice around the pliers. Now that may be a little bit too small. Let's just see if my chain will pass through that. It will actually, so that passes through quite nicely. Just going to make that jump ring a little bit bigger just forcing that bit more round. How's that? Yeah, that runs through quite nicely. Okay, so let's cut this jump ring now as well. Exactly the same as before. Hold on to it. Coming right round, cutting through. There we go. So that's the jump ring there. I'm not gonna solder that jump ring just yet because we need to put it through the ingot loop first of all. Let's see how that's looking in the acid now. Okay, that's looking nice and white. The flux is off it as well because the acid is nice and warm. So that's looking exactly perfectly as we want it. Let's just put that jump ring through the top loop. Open that jump ring up through the top loop and close that nice and tight and let's solder that as well. Two ways we can do this, we can put it in our third hand or lie it, lie it down on our soldering block. I always like to put things in my third hand just so I know exactly where it is and I can control the whole procedure. Let's just make that a little bit straighter. Lovely, 
Okay, and again, we're gonna put a little bit of flux onto that. And the solder doesn't really matter whether it's a hard, it's a medium or an easy. All we're doing is just joining all these links together. Um, I think this is a bit of hard solder. Small little bit of solder as we got there. Put that right upon the joint. And again, exactly the same way as before, we're gonna heat it up. We're just gonna heat up the, uh, the tweezers as well first. And what I find, by heating the tweezers up, the heat transfers through to the jump ring, which then the, makes the water evaporate slowly, which then does not make the solder jump off. As you can see, I'm warming the tweezers up. The water is evaporating slowly off that jump ring. Once the water has evaporated off that jump ring, the borax all goes up. The tweezers are nice and hot. Come along, pay my attention now to the top of this jump ring. This is not gonna come undone. Bob's your uncle. Perfect. Wait a little while, pop that back into the acid as well. Acid, I say acid, it's actually safety pickle. Pop that into there. And again, leave that in there for a few minutes. Okay, it's been there for about two minutes now. It's nice and warm. And that's what we've got. I'm just going to buff a little bit on that top loop. I've got a little bit of flux left on that top loop. Let's just smooth down that bit of flux as well. Super, okay. I don't want this to be really highly polished because I'm not that sort of person to wear highly bright sort of things. I'm just gonna get my pendant drill gently going over the outside surface. This is um, a 21 millimeter white nylon brush. My favorite, absolute favorite, this is. And this is gonna be ideal to get into these little areas where we buffed before we put the jump ring on. Come around the bottom of that jump ring. And go over the top bale sort of jump ring as well. You can see this is the most adaptable, most popular in my eyes type of brush to have. There we go. And that's all I'm going to do to it. I'm going to wipe it over with a cloth. I'm just gonna pop it in some hot soapy water, or if you've got an ultrasonic, use that. Or if you've got a bit of a jewelry cloth, come across and just give that a bit of a wash, a bit of a wipe over. But as you can see with the state of the chain, it's not highly polished. I don't really want this too shiny, but let me just pop that in some warm soapy water just to get rid of all that excess polish. That's got all the polish out of the hallmark. This is the hallmark down the front of the ingot here. So my chain will go back through that. So that is back on my neck, completely restored. Oh, guys, gold. Ready for another 10, 15 years, however long it's gonna to take to wear through again. So that's how we replace the top loop upon an ingot. It could be a locket, it could be a different type of pendant. Just showing you the technique that we used to attach that top jump ring, making that jump ring a little bit thinner. So the contact areas, the amount of solder that we use to join those two surfaces together is larger than if we just had the simple jumping gun upon the top, makes a nice strong joint, and how we controlled the flow of solder so we don't mess up and filling all that detail of that hallmark on that one side. 
So I hope you enjoyed the film. Don't forget, please like this film, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already, and please share it with your friends. I'd love you to do so. But in the meantime, my name's Andrew Berry for At The Bench's YouTube channel. See you next time. Bye-bye.